Fora TV. The world is thinking. Let's turn to the next president, who's going to have a hard choice to make. Background. George W. Bush increased spending, but cut taxes. Under the next president, spending, I don't know anybody who doesn't expect spending to increase because as the baby boomers age, they'll claim more and more from government entitlement programs. These are programs that are already enacted, that are in law, that would be virtually impossible to reverse. And um, as for taxes, the Bush tax cuts, as John said, are set to expire very substantially by the end of 2010. So what should the next president do? Go ahead and let the Bush tax cut expire on the theory that the government needs extra revenues to cover the higher spending? Or should he try to make the Bush tax cuts permanent? Ken Judd. <clears throat> Whatever the proposal is on, by anybody, Obama, Pitt, um, Clinton, or uh, McCain, I think it should be consistent. And so the question is not should you make the tax cuts permanent, but if you're going to make them permanent, where are you going to cut spending? Uh, I mean, there, uh, also the other elephant in the room is AMT. McCain also um, in, um, has proposed minimum tax. Uh, well, it has also proposed eliminating the AMT, which is another big loss of revenue for the government. So, <clears throat> if Ron Paul was elected president, then yes, make the tax, Bush tax cuts permanent, and because uh, he would eliminate one third <coughs> the, yes. the federal bureaucracy the next um, day, but, or try to. But McCain is not. McCain um, wants to increase. What the you're military. saying effectively is the next president yeah. must raise taxes in a massive way, because you're saying you can only cut taxes well, if you cut spending, and nobody well, knows, nobody some, believes that we can cut somebody spending. Somebody right? down the road has to pay the bills. Somebody down the road has to pay the bills, either by cutting spending, cutting benefits, or raising taxes. What's the mix? And you John. can kick it down the road, but somebody down the road has John. to. Do. Well, first of all, I think it's very important that to make the tax cuts permanent, to prevent the taxes from increasing. It would be really a large drag on the economy. The AMT is getting extended year by year anyway, so why not just deal with that one time and, and get it off the books? It's very confusing now. It just keeps getting extended. I don't think you need to cut in the sense of you're using it. It's basically slowing down the growth of the, a lot of these programs. It seems to me it's quite doable, and with the the, the negative reaction so many uh, people have had to the increase in spending, really from 01 to 05, it's, it's, uh, until this year it slowed down quite a bit, but I think that's what politicians do. Can and I, I think McC someone like McCain is... Uh, Let me add, here's a question, here's the absolutely fundamental question, and it requires reflection on the experience of the last quarter century. And I, I begin by remembering, this is the way I begin most of my economic thoughts, a conversation that I had with Milton Friedman. And Milton started with the position, first of all, what he wanted to do was decrease government spending. That was always the end. And he started with the position that you ought to cut taxes, but only where you can find offsetting cuts in government spending. And he ended the, with the position that the only way to place pressure on spending was by cutting taxes. I never heard him use the phrase, but he subscribed to the Star of the Beast yes, yes. thesis, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, that seemed to me to fit what I saw of, of experience in the 1980s when Reagan cut taxes, and then there was this, they were worried about re, uh, 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 de climbing deficits, so he clawed back some of the tax cuts in TEFRA, that huge oh. tax. But TEFRA was coupled with a promise by Tip O'Neill and Bob Dole that for every dollar in tax increases, government spending would be cut by $3. And the best studies that I've seen suggest that government spending was cut by at most 30 cents. It didn't work. Even with Reagan, even with a deal, it just didn't. You, the incentives in Washington are such that it's virtually impossible to cut spending unless you can go to the voters and say, we don't have the money. But when you think about what works and what doesn't, remember, we had revenues growing very strongly. Uh, and in fact, by the late 90s, there was a budget surplus. Right. You had a recession. The, it, it, so it worked. The, way, the Reagan program worked. effectively Basically worked. Basically, it worked, yeah. So you start by cutting taxes. That's the pressure point. Is, Is that, that not what right? you can do politically? I think it's important to get the, the spending uh, cut, too. You know, it's, it's, very, uh, more, it's much more difficult to work on the spending, in fact. And, but that's, that's essential. I, I, don't, I think it's kind of you do it to b both. But right now, a tax increase in 2011, 2012, 2013, et cetera, is what's on the books, would be very bad for the economy. And we, ne we need not, we just make sure we, we can't do that. So the, go ahead. Uh, the, no, we've got you outnumbered. 1980s two to one now, and 1990s, this deal seemed to work. By the way, by the yeah. way, we should say, Reagan cut taxes, 
and Clinton left them low. He raised yeah, taxes yeah. in a certain on the top brackets a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Fundamentally, he left them low. That is a right. bipartisan a, a consensus yes. effectively that had been right. achieved. Furthermore, Reagan reduced spending as a proportion of gross domestic product, and Clinton reduced it even further. You have a bipartisan yes. achievement, which, alas, in the current circumstances has slipped some. Spending has gone up a little bit as a proportion of GDP. But it worked. It did work. You cut the taxes. But then it fell apart in 2001. We had a $3 trillion increase in gross federal debt. Um, we're up to about Why? nine trillion. Because well, there was a remember there was this recession and recession which was very generally. mild. I don't we think the recession can. It was mild, but you always have. A, I don't think a, that, that recession predicate. can justify a three trillion dollar increase in our debt, national debt today. It's good fraction of it, actually. And but there was an increase in discretionary spending, and that's yes. the problem. No question about that. Now, also the Republicans in, sidled up to the trough, <coughs> and and it behaved like porkers. Is that roughly what happened? Yes. 